You are listening to The Insider with Brian Lloyd. The opinions expressed are that of the individuals and can sometimes be of an adult nature. Today we are joined by Robbie Glick, a very well-known comic book collector and... Uh, I suppose authority if you like on the entire subject Robbie thanks for joining us thanks for having me um just to start off with and I I suppose just to kind of start off and be nice and broad about it I was looking at IMDB and I was checking out that I think there are something in the region of about 35 to 40 comic book films between now and 2020 am I right in saying that to be honest I wouldn't doubt it yeah (laughs) they because the success starting with Iron Man is what started this whole process with mm. Marvel anyway uh, and Batman uh, everybody's getting on the bandwagon yeah do you think we're hitting a point that we're gonna hit saturation uh, anything's possible hmm I would like to hope not because uh, based on the storylines I mean there's a lot of excitement about the different storylines with Marvel and DC mm. uh, because of the success people are buying rights to comic books before they're even published yeah yeah uh so it's extremely uh in high demand yeah. if there's a good storyline and that kind of thing uh, and there's a direct re- correlation to the news with tv shows and movies yeah. and that kind of thing and rights being bought uh to the value of comics yeah yeah i mean it's just what strikes me so much about it is is that it, you know, it's gone from something, and I hope you don't, I, I don't mean this in any kind of offensive You're way, right. but it, 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 it's gone from something that was very, very niche and very closed off to something that, like, you literally are seeing Iron Man, you know, uh, pajamas and stuff like that. You know, that sort of Absolutely. way. It's just become such a part of the zeitgeist. I'm just wondering, you as somebody who has obviously done this for, you know, for a good part of your life and all the rest of it, and it is very much a part of your life, how do you find it being out in the open, if, if, you, if you get my No, no I, I understand completely. It was... Uh those that watch Big Bang Theory, yeah, Sheldon would be the typical. Yeah, it used to be a geeky, nerdy kind of yeah, yeah, hobby. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Mm. Uh, now, because it's become streamlined, mm. there's it's no longer a geeky thing. Yeah, it's actually cool. Mm. Uh, so it has changed dramatically in the last decade. I mean, is it a case of? Do you think it's losing something intrinsic? Do you think it's losing any kind of quality in the fact that it's becoming, as you say, streamlined? Uh, yes and no. The quality is always paramount mm. to a movie or TV show's success, obviously. Mm. Uh, now, that being said, uh, now I was one of the people back in the 90s that would buy, I mean, I bought, uh, would buy 50 copies of the same yeah. comic book. Uh, and I was one of those speculators that helped Marvel go bankrupt <laughs> because they just, they had no limit of print runs and yeah. they didn't sell them all. Uh, and they got in trouble. They wound up selling all their rights to Spider-Man, mm. X-Men, all, those all the ones, yeah, to like and Roger Corman and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, they, so they're slowly trying to get that back. Mm. Uh, but uh, it is important for the success, and the reason I'm bringing that up is fantastic for the reboot. Yes. They did for all the wrong reasons. Okay. Uh, they did it s- purely to maintain the rights, because if they didn't do it by a certain time, the rights were going back to Marvel. Exactly. So Josh Trank, pardon the pun, mm-hmm. tanked it. You think? Yes. Like I okay right because I I'm absolutely I'm very I'm, I'm very much up on Fantastic Four and I am familiar with it and the whole thing about. Uh, Burden Eichner back in the 90s when he had to make that like one that he made with Roger Corman for like in million you know that one that was never released the Fantastic yeah, Four that, film, that's right yeah, the 1994 yeah. one yeah so it is it is it does does seem to be a recurring theme with Fantastic Four that it just like they're just shoving these movies out because they've got to keep the rights on Fantastic Four I'm assuming you've seen it yeah no I actually have not really uh, no I don't haven't had the time I haven't the, the last I did see Ant-Man yeah because uh, I was invited to see it yeah yeah uh, but I haven't been to the cinema in ages because wow. I spent it, it, I actually grade comic books I determine a comic book's condition yeah and it takes all my time because really? I've got tens of thousands of books so you just got to go through them all well, so you don't even get a chance well yeah I, and it, it the process of grading a book actually takes one book will take probably a minute or really? so to properly properly grade it yeah 
uh, if, if it's a high grade book. So wow. I've, I've been doing that for the last two years nonstop. I mean, I'm assuming it's quite scientific, isn't it? The, the whole process. Uh, I of it? actually. Uh, or is it the, instinctive? The, no, it's not instinctive. The, it can be instinctive for lower grades, uh, but when it comes to high grade stuff, we're talking investment quality. There is a grading scale that starts from zero, basically, or 0.5, up to a 10.0. Uh, I spent years submitting books to a company called CGC, also PGX, and there's a new company called CBCS, who they all they do is determine a comics condition mm. and they encapsulate it. Mm. Uh, so it took me a couple of years because they don't advertise how they yeah. grade for obvious reasons. So I developed my own scientific method, which is pretty accurate. And if I have a grade, all my books at conventions, every book has a condition on it mm. because you can't really value something, any any collectible, mm-hmm. until you determine its condition. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So that, yeah. that's what I'm known for here in mm. Ireland. There are two people registered with CGC, which is one of these companies in Ireland. I am one of them. And uh, there's a gentleman in Galway as well mm. uh, who doesn't, he's, he does kind of his own books. Mm. I'm the only one that will pre-screen books yeah. for submission because it's extremely expensive because yeah. of shipping. I was going to mention that actually just on expense and stuff like that. <clears throat> Ballpark figure. I mean, what would you say is the highest amount you have seen somebody pay for a comic book? Here in Ireland, the most, well, I know of someone that paid 10 grand wow. for a book. What kind of book, what book was it? It was the first appearance of Spider-Man, Amazing Fantasy 15. Wow. Yes. 15,000. 10,000. Oh, 10,000. 10, sorry, 10,000. 10, I'm sorry, and, just, yeah. Uh, in fact, what he did, he's, he brought books to me, uh, key books. Amazing Fantasy 15 was one of them. Now, yeah. It was a lower grade. Yeah. Uh, we submitted to CGC, came back a 1.5. I told him, don't sell this for less than five grand. Right. Put five to six grand on it. He wound up selling for five grand, and he reinvested that into a higher grade. And then he got his... And he, got, and he pay, wound up paying an extra five grand on top of the five grand he got from the other one yeah. and upgraded the quality of the book. Just like, okay, right, just, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, this is, you know, we're, you're, we're talking serious money here Absolutely. and so on and so forth. I'm just wondering, I mean, is it not the kind of thing that these things are meant to be living, you know, that sort of way that they're meant to be enjoyed? Absolutely, of course. And the fact is, I mean, I got in, I, my mom bought me a comic book when I was nine years old. That started everything. Yeah. Uh, and absolutely, the, it is for enjoyment. Uh, but at the same time, when I started collecting, comics were 40 cents. Yeah. And up until the early 90s, they only got up to a dollar. About that, yeah. So it, it was no big deal buying 30 copies of the same issue because it's only 30 quid. Mm. Here, nowadays, on the other hand, the lowest price you'll see is three quid, and if it's a, most of them are four or five. If you get a giant size, it can be eight. Mm. You're certainly not going to buy multiple copies nowadays. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is meant for enjoyment, but at the same time, if you're buying paying books for cover price, mm. if you maintain the condition of the book that you bought it new, mm. then the books increase in value. So you can get your money back if you take care yeah, and yeah, read. Yeah. It, it, you do, I can read a, a 9.8 is basically the highest investment grade generally that you'll find. Mm. And I can read a 9.8 and maintain its 9.8 condition. Mm-hmm. Indefinitely? Indefinitely. But that's what slabbing is all about. That's why these companies came out. CGC started in 2001. Mm-hmm. Uh, because again, maintaining the condition is very difficult just handling yeah. a book. You, if you put any spine stress, yeah, the at all, oils and your yeah, fingers. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So the point of slabbing a book, if it's an expensive book already, you want to get it slabbed to guarantee it's going to be in the same condition forever. Hmm. Therefore, it will increase in value. You kind of have me thinking now. I should like go out and like you know possibly look about like invest well, well, in a few quid. And- well, it's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, ITV came out to our house uh, last week, and uh, they asked specifically for a new collector that is solely investment and I thought of one gentleman because he's uh, invested actually called me he attended one of my monthly cons and yeah. to sell some stuff he had in his attic and really paid attention the entire day and six months later he gives me a call saying hey I got some, a bonus coming from work I want to invest in comics what what would you recommend really and I said leave that with me and I recommended I had an iron fist uh, people that have watched x-men movies yeah, yeah. they'll know the character Sabretooth of course, yeah. Uh, Iron Fist 14 back in 1977 was the first appearance of Sabretooth mm-hmm. in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and it was a slab 9.6. And this gentleman bought, bought it. 
Yeah. Do you mind for asking? I have, do you mind asking for how much? It was a th- I, I had 1500 on it, but because I knew he would be a regular customer, I sold it to him for 1000 Wow. So, I mean, it's the kind of thing that he's going to keep that and let that kind of And he's going to just sit on it. And yeah. guess what? In the last couple of days, we're finding out Wolverine's last movie could include Sabertooth. Sabertooth. So that's going to shoot Schreiber, the price up. Which means he will probably... If that were to happen, uh, potentially more than double his money in the space of a few years. I mean, these are the, the prices of the comic, these actually correlate to films and so on and so forth. Big time. And in fact, uh, now I've been too busy since Dublin Comic Con, yeah. but uh, there was an announcement uh, made that they're looking for the actress to play Gambit's yes. wife. Yeah, that's right. I've seen that. Uh, and her first appearance was X-Men number eight back in the early 90s during Jim Lee's yeah, yeah. Uh, run. Uh, I had to look that up, never. Because, I, I, because of what I do, I don't have time to read them anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm passionate about the hobby. Yeah, and yeah. I love it and always have. Yeah. And uh, we actually started doing vlogs with my stepson's recommendation right, right. to teach the Irish collector how to take care of comics mm. from the store mm. to home and put it in a box and make sure you maintain the condition. Just uh, actually on that, I mean, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, the fact that, you know, as you say yourself, I mean, you, you don't you don't read comic books all that much anymore, but just because you're so invested in, you know, keeping them and, you know, collecting them and, you know, all the grading valuation, and grading and grading them, for, for conventions, them. Yeah. yeah, for conventions and so on and so forth. I mean, Okay, and I, again, I, I really don't want to insult you, but I mean, does that not kind of take the fun out of it? I mean, does it not, like, the whole kind of spectacle of it all and the fact, the fantasy element of it all, but the fact that you're kind of enforcing this kind of economic system on it? Well, no, I'm, I'm not actually forcing it. I know, it. I don't, I don't it, mean it, enforcing it. The, the, it's just, the industry yeah. is forcing it more than yeah. I am. I'm just trying to keep up with it and yeah. keep the collector uh, basically caught up with what's going on. Mm. I am a collector first yeah business person second uh and the fact is i only do this part-time yeah i only do my monthly comic con i have a major illness cystic fibrosis so i'm not able to unfortunately sure. uh and that's uh w- with uh got into selling accidentally i've never bought a book with the intention of selling really uh just got into doing this uh probably two and a half years ago wow yeah so it's i mean so it is like it's a thriving business obviously yeah oh it, it, but yeah it's it's doing uh dublin comic con was our best con thus far, Belfast mm. last year was our best, but mm. Dublin Comic Con topped that. Wow. Uh, and the Republic of Ireland, because the books were not accessible sure. years and years ago, yeah, of course, yeah. the collector is not really up to date yeah. uh, with condition. Like it was never available. So yeah. comic book store owners would say, look, condition doesn't matter. This is what we got. Take it or leave it, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had no other option until I started. Sure attending a monthly con and brought my some of my own books and mm. then all of a sudden why is that book so expensive well if you look at the condition it's in such a good condition see, exactly. it's 9.8 and so on and so forth exactly um what is your favorite comic book what would be your favorite co- from a comic book spider-man character? is my favorite character i in fact i started collecting spider-man when i was nine years old because of the first book my mom bought me uh, i went to my first convention when in 1980 12 or 13 and yeah. thought "Ooh, this is interesting i bought conan one two and three for $100 at the time. And that's when I started diversifying. Yeah, and yeah. Collecting everything, basically. Yeah. And, and what's, your, what's your favorite comic book movie? Ooh, I mean, do you, I, mean I, I know you so, were saying... You, I mean, yeah. I'd have to say Star Wars is my all-time favorite. And the great thing about Star Wars is the comic book came out before the movie, and most people don't know that. And really? Darth Vader was actually green on the cover. His face. That's right, yeah. And didn't they like copy the design of the X Wings from like Battlestar Galactica or something like that, wasn't that, it? That I'm not sure. I'm there not was, sure about yeah. that, but there I mean, was, I went yeah. to the cinema probably a dozen times to see Star Wars <laughs> when it came out. Yeah. You're looking forward to the new 77. one? 77. Oh, uh, boy, am I looking forward yeah. to it. In fact, Star Wars books I'm actually hoarding for myself because yeah. I know uh, they're going to. They're going well, to shoot it it, we know it's not going to just be one movie. So Okay, Robbie Glick, thanks a mil for talking to us. Um, if we want to follow comicbooks.ie, comic, comics book or comic, comic study? Books. Comics book. okay. Comicbooks.ie. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, that is actually our website. Uh, we just started doing the vlogging, as I mentioned earlier, on the YouTube channel. Uh, and it's comicbooks.ie as well. And if you like what you see, please subscribe and share. And if you want to contact us, Contact us because you want me to cover something. I'd be more than happy to. You can contact us through the website as well and Facebook. Great stuff. Robbie Glick, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, man.